Hello, my friend. Yeah, you tried to change color so you would blend in. But I saw you. I saw you when you were bright green. Now you're almost black. Really cool. There you are, buddy. My first island anoli. I think he was picking a fight with another anoli a second ago. Oh my gosh, there's the cutest little inchworm in the background. So we've got an anoli right there and a cute little inchworm right there. ask for a more picturesque moment. That's so cool. This is all taking place on the very tiny little world of a tree. Very pretty. Very pretty and very peaceful. So far I have seen that little Noli who was super cute and most all of the birds that I hear, I recognize. But we are over on the developed part of the island, and up north is where there's 10,000 acres of protected wildland. Oh, and I see another anoli. Okay, I'm gonna see. Oh, he's climbing into the tree. I'm gonna see if I can get some little footage of him because he's doing the territorial displays. Oh, hang in there, little guy. Hi, buddy. I bet there's a bazillion anoles all over the place if I just looked a little closer. I know a lot of you guys are like, Siri, there's nothing special about an anole. But the point is sharing the daily adventure and surprises, not taking anything for granted. So hi, little guy. You're just a beautiful little emerald speck way up there in that tree. And there's another case for needing to invest in some sort of wildlife photography camera. It'll be like Siri taking up the, the mantle of my hero Sir David Attenborough and Steve Irwin and Jeff Corwin and trying to do what I can to bring those kinds of things to you guys. Oh my gosh, this is so fun. But yeah, I need a better camera. I noticed that when I was looking at vlogs from last year, I didn't have as good a camera, so I didn't vlog as much, and the quality definitely wasn't as high for me, for my own memories. I want high quality memories. So that means I'm gonna need to get a high quality camera. Because, and I can say this since this is for the vlog channel, uh, I can be a little bit more transparent. These kinds of moments are very special and very unique going on a big vacation like this. They're the choices that can be made because of the very like responsible financial decisions Chips and I have made and especially his family helping out because they're coming on the trip too so that's going to be really cool. But also there are moments that I want to remember because the question of what will my health be in 5 years, 10 years from now is always kind of up in the air. And instead of getting really depressed about that and letting it consume my life, I just want to focus on living in the moment and sharing those moments with you guys. And then who knows, maybe if I do end up getting sick, I'll be able to put balm on my heart because I'll be like, okay, future Siri, remember this moment. You're standing outside. You are enjoying a beautiful vacation with the love of your life. It's fantastic. So future Siri, don't be sad because current Siri, your past self, is loving this and taking it all in for you. So I've got your back and I'm there for you no matter what happens in the future. So hang in there future Siri. <laughs> Draw on these memories. I'll gather up as much green energy as possible for future Siri and hopefully send some of it forward to you. And there's anolis jumping in the trees! Hi buddy! Oh my goodness. <laughs> Look at you go. Are you off on a mission? I think that's a female. <gasps> that's so cool. Tree jumping and nollies. Are you going to do it again? Look at your tail. Oh, look how fast you are. You're changing color. That's so cool. She's starting to go. It's really hard to tell with the sunlight on her the way the camera's picking it up but it's starting to go more brown at the tail region and at the head. Oh, and I can hear some other anoles running around in the trees around us. That's so neat, you guys. Those anoles are pretty cute. <laughs>
I know that a lot of people who have grown up in the South are like, oh, but Syria Nolis are so boring and plain and usual. But what's really fun is that being able to make these videos and share them with you guys is kind of a reminder that we're a worldwide audience. What may seem boring and mundane to one person is so exotic and exciting for another. And I really love that because it's a great reminder that everything is truly an adventure. It really can be. It's not whether or not it's a common thing in where you live. It's what kind of personality, what kind of excitement you bring to it. So anything can be an adventure, even just a stroll in the park in the morning looking at anoles climbing trees. And it's just all about like what perspective you're going to bring to it. So don't give up you guys, even if anoles are usual, even if you think there's nothing exciting going on where you live, try to think of it from the point of view of somebody who doesn't live where you are. That's what I'm always saying about getting behind the camera. What seems typical to you including like how people work or like how your city is set up, the way your streets are designed, those kinds of really basic things can be very exciting. Everybody has a story to tell. Just most people don't believe that they're worth the story. And you are. Everyone is. That's why I make these. Also for my future self, like I said, so I can remember. Hey Siri, remember when you sat there and you're trying to figure out if it's a cicada sitting in the tree or not? And you're wondering if Chips is going to wake up because you kind of want to go to the beach and you kind of want to go sign up for all the bird walking tours. I'm going to go check if Chips has woken up. But I just wanted to say that because I think it's something that you guys need to hear again and again and again. That everybody has a story to tell. You guys just, a lot of people just think that their life is boring and it's not. So if you're kind of in that camp, think of it from a global perspective. What would it be like for somebody who lives on the other side of the planet to see an anole climb up your like house wall? To some people, that would be absolutely stunning. Like, that would make their week, make their year. Who knows? But to others, that's like, oh, that's boring. It's all just how you tell the story and how you how you treat yourself. You know what I mean? So go on an adventure. Everybody has a story. Everybody has an adventure. Shoo, go do something. Go do something. But then come back so you can see what else we do today. <laughs> all right. So making some oatmeal so I can surprise chips with breakfast in bed. And I'm looking out the window as people are starting to wake up and walk by. And I have to say, you guys, there are so many tiny dogs on this island. Like, everybody has a tiny dog with them. And maybe it's just because I'm used to having Great Danes, but I'm just like, that dog is like half the size of our cats. <laughs> and everybody has tiny, cute little dogs with them. And I've noticed everywhere you go, like on the ferry, the ferry master actually gave dog treats to these dogs. It was so cute. I wanted to like record it so bad, but that would have maybe crossed the line. So there were dogs getting dog treats at the ferry. At the ferry docks, both sides, there were bowls of water on the ground for dogs. Um, and when we went to the market last night, there were bowls of water and treats for dogs, like at the market. So this is a very dog-friendly island, which is pretty darn cool. <laughs> he told me I look so cute with my hat on, and now I want to wear my hat all the time because it's really fun when the person you love tells you you look so cute. <laughs> Very cool. Look, big fat ant. You see this? Short or on. Look at them go. Are they chomping it or did they make a nest in it? No. Hi, ladies. How are you guys doing today? You've got a cool wood, cool gigantic piece of wood. If they're eating it, that's going to last them like forever. Generation upon generation.
so many cool caterpillars. Oh my gosh, and what the heck is this guy? Okay, hang on, we're gonna look at Mr. Caterpillar for a second here. Look at how cool he is. We're gonna have to be so careful with where we're walking, my love, because we have these really cool caterpillars. And then you pull back a little bit. What even are you? Mr. Giant Maggot thing? Oh, sorry, buddy. Oh gosh, are you just one of those little, those little dirt larvae? He's like super sized inchworm. He's like, I'm out of here. Back under the leaves where you can be safe, but we'll try not to step on you. <laughs> wow. There you go, buddy. It's just such a really cool tree. I know. I mean, the size of it, and it's so hollowed out. You can, it's so interesting because it almost looks like the sand dunes where they've kind of eroded away over time and everybody eating him. And yet there's like different bushes and strangler plants that have climbed up to the top. And then he arches over the entire path right there. But he's huge, you guys. Cause like, here's my hand. This guy's gigantic. I love him. Now right over here is a spider. We were just saying how there were miles of inchworms everywhere. And right here we actually have a spider who has snagged one of those guys. And even though it's so much bigger than him, he's carrying around his meal to eat. That is so cool. So somebody is definitely eating this tree. Who it is, who knows? Maybe they're just making like a nest inside or something like that? But that is an entire pile of sawdust on the ground. I found the culprit. Who is it? Termites. There's termites? I don't think I've ever seen termites before. That's a huge pile of sawdust. Okay, and there's termites over here? Oh yeah. There's one that was back here. I don't know if he'll get on your stick for you. I think he'd run off first. We could try. Okay, you want to try getting him on your stick? Oh my gosh! He didn't want to be on my stick. Well, he didn't run off as quick as I thought he was going to, though. That's a domesticated old guy. Domesticated and only. The Thad Western Oak, named by the Live Oak Society in honor of Thad Western. Founding presidents of BHI Conservancy and dedicated conservationist, January 30th, 2010. Oh, so this oak was named after somebody, huh? Yeah, this is a big oak. The sheer size of him. Crazy, isn't it? I feel like this is one of the biggest trees I've ever seen. He's pretty big. And I mean, part of him fell down right here and then continues on. And it's so amazing because there's still all this little forest life running over this huge dead log. It's beautiful. So there's even more to him? Yeah. <laughs> You're not gonna get any ugly inchworms, huh? Mm -mm. Just the cutest ones. Is this an aphid? He's just climbing on your shirt. It's so cute. Look, it's an aphid on this leaf. Miles of inchworms. 
Go, little guy, go! Okay, I'll get him off one second, darling. Good <laughs> dog. What kind of dog are you? Does it have a tag name? No. Hi, Mia. You know your name, Mia, huh? Look at how cute you are. You don't have a tail. No tail. Somebody took your tail. No tail. You're gonna grow it back, right? You gotta work on that little guy. You're so cute. Oh my gosh. Look at you. Hummer golf cart. Somebody has a golf cart that's also a little Hummer. And this is amazing. So, delicious lunch with an adorable dog named Mia who belonged to the owner. Apparently there's like a couple dogs and they just wander around that shop all the time. They were really sweet and I think they were begging for some of the chips and salsa. And we took a huge nap and now it's time to go back to the beach and see if we can see something cool. They said that they do get a lot of the sea turtles nesting this time of year, but they don't put flags or markers up so people won't mess with the nesting sites. But if they come along shore, then you can see the drag marks. So I know what I'm going to be looking for today. There's a crab in there. I don't know. Woo! Cold. <laughs> All right, hang on. I'm going to see what is down here. Are you alive, my friend? No, and look at you. It's covered in barnacles. That's so cool. <gasps> They're alive. Oh, the barnacles? Yes. Oh, wow. The whole thing, I can feel it moving. That is so cool. These barnacles are alive, so I'm not going to keep this shell for sure. Look at those little guys. They're doing their, their little best. This is so cool. Wow. You can see their little, their little barnacle selves. Oh my gosh. Oh, I can feel it move. You wanna hold the shell? So hold the shell like down there for a second and then wait for it. Oh, I can feel it. Can you feel them? They're just scooching around. Isn't that so cool? So they're just filtering away, filtering away in the water. Good find, darling. All right, I'm gonna put them right back where I found them, so that they can continue doing their little, their little barnacle selves. Even though my mom would probably be like freaking out and wanting to keep the shell. You take care, little guys. Good luck.
Look at this guy. I think it's like this interesting piece of seaweed. I've never really seen seaweed up close before, like this. This kind at least, like not the kind that you don't make with uh, make sushi out of. <laughs> and it looks amazing. And you know, one of my very first thoughts when I saw it, it kind of looks like the seaweed things from Subnautica. Isn't that hilarious? This is really cool. I can see where they got some of their designs for the like underwater um, plant life in that game because this is really neat. Pinch? I don't know if you're about to get pinched. That's so cool, <laughs> darling. Sorry, I need to stop bothering a while. <laughs> Well, no, you found it. Yeah, I found it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. My first sand dollar all by myself.